right. Welcome back, everyone. Sorry for the delay here. Uh, it's always the cables, isn't it? Um, so today we have Shasha and Giuseppe who are going to take us through the facility we have here at the LMD and also the training program and uh, additional info that's available from both our booking system and the websites. Um, so with that, I'll leave it to you guys. Yep. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Chris. Um, yeah. Today is the last day of the EM course. Yeah, as usual, I will talk to you about a little bit of our facility and what we have, and then what kind of microscope we have, and what is the booking rules, <laughs> and also uh, what training will be. Training part will be Jishafi will, will carry on the, the, the training part. So I will start with this uh, the EM facility thing. So I just follow the last. Not touch. Um, like two, uh, three years ago now, the, the EM course, we have this, um, this slide, but now we have a slightly uh, little bit more. Uh, so I put it like a, a yellow. So, and we, the microscope in the, in the facility, of course, we, we almost double the size. And also, then this offer your new choice. And we got the more information point for the user to get a reference from. So this is like we have a website, and then we all we have other uh, other like other people uh, groups web website, and also the the wiki thing. Um, for the EM booking, we have a carpenter system, and then training we get more people. So Crystal already last year last time he talking about training. Now he talking about data collection. So Jishapi will give you a. a uh, uh, give, give some your information about the training. So, yeah, this is the also the the old, old slide in the in, in three years ago. And that time we have a five TM. Now we have eight microscope together totally. So seven TM and one SEM now. And for for other uh, 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 auxiliary uh, equipment, now we. Yeah, we got more virtual box and the many users, many uh, plungers seem to be become more and more popular. So more use, and then we got new growth charge and other other small thing. Um, so the computer, yeah, the EM computer temporary storage. This is not not part of Jack, and this is what Greg create. Uh, we on yeah on three years ago we on a terabit, then. And 2015 got 26. Now, um, end of in fact the, the end of last year we got we got this number. So 215 terabit. So prepare for your data. Yeah. So <laughs> even with a new microscope, two new ones come. We hope it's still cope with. So hope we can keep your data set for three days. So each day you maybe got 70 terabit if you can produce. And before you be delete, or yeah, you well, you need to transfer to Jack's scientific computer or your storage. So this is what the the way we have. And then another part, so yeah, of course, the the film uh, we not really use uh, very rarely use, and laser dictometer not really use. And the last piece of the related to the EM film is the EM darkroom. Yeah, so last one, you may eventually gone now this year. It will become part of the the new product room. So this is another error. Start. Um, so for the microscope in the in the EM facility, um, I put the, this this table as uh, just a little bit history because from Richard's talk and Chris Russo's talk, uh, you know that there's a really long history of EM in the in LMB. This is a like pre pre my history. Um, so. Now I just this table was I, I, I adapted one. The last talk is we start about 13 years ago when when the microscope we call slightly modernized. So you can see that all all have we started the FBI is a Tech 9 microscope and still keep some uh, CM uh, microscope in in the in the facility. So it, it this pre my time. So the, then this. Uh, this few year, I coming on, on this year. Uh, well, not this year. This is I, I coming on in in 
in, in this year. Anyway, this is uh, coming in, in, in this year. So this is keep with a similar number of the microscope until we move to the new building. We, we change it to a few microscope because we can have a star have clouds. And then we change it, the, the technique, uh, the, to some of the microscope become technique spirit. And so from 2015, we added the cells. Then last year, we added the clouds too and another two, 200 kV fact so as a intermediate microscope between the entry level and the, the data collection. So this year we keep the same, but maybe by the end of year or early next year, we will have another one. one. Oh, I did not write another. We, in fact, we already have a, another Polara that is waiting to install. So the total number, now, you, now we take a, this technology, yeah, if you, if you, uh, we, 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 we temporarily put it to, to be modified. So, so we will get have about 10. So I put it a gray color. So this is what the facility we have since last Quarium course. So it's almost double the, the amount. So this is what last, last time we have the, the, uh, the microscope. So you can guess what, what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I believe you all know, or all know it. But I was to say, it's not, not so different. <laughs> Maybe I should tell you, this is 10 12. <laughs> so it's quite similar with this one. And then when, when Nigel is here, but this one will become, become a fact at the top. So we will see very soon. Uh, so when we get, when we get the, <laughs> on, on like 2013, we get our first uh, crowds in, so we are all really happy. So that's really <laughs> source are really happy. So we're really happy with the source of the light and also the, the crowds and the detector come with it. So there, this is a combined, just perfect. <laughs> so, so, so this is slightly better <laughs> with, with our, uh, I think this is news, uh, the, the work, the artwork when nobody can take the cloud, cloud one picture properly because the room was so small. <laughs> so this is a special technique. <laughs> so, uh, so according to what the, the first style, I'm going to talk about the configuration. That's all, like what, what you have for each microscope. This is the last year's one, uh, no, the last course. Uh, cloud EM course. So we I still only uh, li list this five microscope, but because they remain almost the same, except we take away this one and then we add more. The next time we're talking about a bit more of the new one. But from, from this one, we can see this is what how, how people's choice. What difference is we got the voltage different. So the electron beams energy different. So this uh, the highlight here we got. 120 kV and up to 300 kV. So you can get different electron wavelength. And we also have the uh, specimen holder different. So at the, the, the en uh, entry level microscope, all have side entry. And the parallel have the, have the spe special one. Um, and also the, the, the cryos have the auto loader. So this is the, the different from the these three category of the microscope. And also highlight here is from cryos, we have a three condensed lens system, which provide the, the much more parallel beam that, that you, we can be easily control. And you can also, it has a digital um, display to tell you are you in the parallel beam or not, or, or, or focus beam, or any or, or, or any other uh, condition? So it's very convenient. Yeah, I think this like parallel, you, you can have a parallel beam because you only have two condensed lens. So sometimes you change the spot size or medication or any uh, dose, so you may not be able to get the parallel beam, and then you not really know. You really have to be careful. So um, to for for uh, for parallel, but for Crowds, this is one type of the autom automation. So you can you can rely on the microscope to to tell you. Um, of course, you still have to know. <laughs> um, so uh, other different is uh, is that we got the energy filter for the high end microscope. So from three hundred kV, we have a Gitan uh, uh, energy uh, image filter GIF. Well, but the Polaro, we still have a gift 3DM, 864. This is one of the generation before the quantum. Uh, so we still have CCD camera uh, picked uh, after the gift. 
uh, for the crowds, we will have the, the newer, newest generation Kongtun. So this one give you a much bigger entry aperture, so reduce the post column um, magnification, and also give you a much a better collection of all, all the aberration and also the energy, the energy re re resolution, etc. Um, so for the detector part, I will talk about the next one. So there's a difference between uh, between these two microscope. Um, the 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 entry microscope we do not have the direct electron detector, we have a CCD camera. Um, for the 300 KB, we all have. So Polara, you have, a, we started, but this is the old, old, old one now. So I will, talk, I will not talk about this too much. I will talk about this. OK, yeah, because this table I saw is too small. So I make it is a, a cut in half to, to show the, uh, the, the four uh, fake microscope. Uh, this is the, the, the new one. So uh, from, from last year, we, we started to use the, the F20 uh, as one of the, one of the intermediate microscope. So people use, can use it as a screening or can do the uh, uh, median resolution data correction. Can do your, the, like, uh, you can process it to see what your 2D class, uh, uh, 2D class average is, so what your first model look like. Or, or just use the data correction for tomography particularly for room temperature. Uh, so the 200 kV uh, microscope, uh, you can c uh, compare like Polara and, and F20, they all have two condensed lens. So, so Quails have three condensed lens. So uh, then the, comp the specimen stage, you've got side entry, get a holder for F20. Uh, but Polara, you have a, a Polara style of this, the crowd transfer for system for six uh, cartridge. So yeah. Uh, Quails have 12, but this is auto load more, more or less automatically. So the con yeah, object lens, they are, in fact, they are really, really similar. So this is the old Tech 9 twin uh, lens. It's, in fact, it's quite a good lens, really, uh, it's low uh, aberration. Uh, so, but it's uh, because of the pore piece is so, so narrow, you cannot, I think it's just four millimeter. Uh, uh, in there, so you cannot put too much thing inside. Cannot do too much fill uh, mechanism to make a fill or, or like make double tilt or or do do and anything to about it. So, but it's a very good lens. So when then when you turn to the quails, they make the, the poppies gap uh, bigger. So you got a nine millimeter bigger in the object lens. This space give you you uh, some really space to put your like uh, quail box and or, or the any or sensor to detect the temperature and other you can put even can put the double tilt mechanism inside and then you can more reliable do the tomography uh, so so this is from the the, the quails but because it's called quail twin it's slightly down uh, downgrade a little bit from the like uh, like all the aberration um, uh, uh, parameter like uh, the CS or CC, uh, but it's still okay because this one you, for the quails you can still go to get some extra, some extra re 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 resolution. I think yeah. For biological sample, we cannot. But if you put a go in, <laughs> you some you can really something can see, uh, see the the information limit that can go beyond one extra. Of course, it's not, not easy to get, and then not always in all direction. But, but it's still not limit our ultimate resolution. So the main limit of the resolution now is the specimen and radiation damage and how you, how you operate to achieve all, uh, all the, the best performance of the microscope now. Uh, so for this three microscope, uh, you can, uh, the, from class two, we got the phase play. So this is not from the others. So face play on the object lens label. This will give you a much more improve of the face contrast, especially in the in focus for the, those weak face objects like our biological sample frozen or, or sectioning. Um, so this will be really helpful for the tomography. So continue from the la last table. The, the detector we have in the F20 is uh, Falcom 2. So we also the help camera is a CCD. So and for for this one we have 
there's a thick, uh, a stem detected well on the, on the high high angle one and the 35 millimeter one. So this one, um, we 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 did this setup. People can do a normal normal thing with this software like a normal low dose and use these two tier and or DM interface for control the camera. You we can you can run EPU for automatic data correction. You can run Tomo for Tomo for the for tomography. And you or you or you like your series EM. You can do the tomography on your series EM. And and then one does group use stem for do tomography for the um, sectioning at the room temperature. This is going very well, very help. So uh, this is the this is my scope. So this one has become very popular, so we have to shorten the time of the booking. So, so three mm -hmm. booking session per day, so six hours for each session. So for the go to Prara, we said this is one of the most uh, not easy to use my scope. So because um, it's less automation and the cloud transfer system is quite easy to get a problem. Uh, but it's still a very good microscope. I, I believe quite a lot of high relevant data still come from this one, particular the tomography. Before we, uh, the, the, the people data all come from this one. So the configuration we early we early talk about for the software side. Uh, for this one, we also have EPU. We also have CRG EM. You you, you got. Get, uh, uh, FEI so Explore 3D. You can you can use the file file cam for do tomography, but not not through the 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 GIF. Uh, CHEM you can use you you can use tomography and then you uh, through the GIF. Mm -hmm. So um, sh so for the Prora is still one of the our data collection microscope, but because the the energy filter is not as advanced as the the clouds. So to some now the tomography uh, users are most uh, switch more to to the cloud, uh, to clouds. So now we come to the clouds. The quest one and quest two, they are because this one came about four years ago. This is last year. So what different is well they all have uh, we all have GIF energy filter contour. So and we also all have. Falcom 3 electron counting for pre gif and CETA uh, de detector for as a pre gif So these two cameras, before the energy filter, people can do the single particle correction, uh, uh, de de uh, data collection. And, and also, if you want to do the tomography without filter, this is one can use. So the post gif that we, they all, we all have a, a K2, we all have a K2 after the, the GIF. So this K2 is setting new, so you got a thinner chip like the K2XP. So, and this one, we temporarily still the, the summit. Um, but, but the Quails one only have embedding down, so that means you can use the EPU to, to control the K2. So through EPU, you can image single particle, use K2 or Falcon. Um, but for this one, you only can use Falcon, well, no K2 anyway. This, uh, for Quest 2, we also hope we can embed, because the upgrade, the extra part of the spectroscopy upgrade for this microscope, that's mean the, the Gitan's, um, uh, the Gitan's image system has upgraded. So it's no longer compatible to the embedding. But still, we are still find some way, uh, and then hope the company provide the software upgrade to be make into uh, make to become embedding. Or we may have to run two sort of two set of software, like the lower, uh, the earlier version of the DM, the digital micrograph in here. We can do the embedding, and people can use EPU and collect the. Uh, data to K2, like the Quest 1. And if you want to run spectroscopy, uh, like the EO or STEM, then you, we can use another version, the advanced version of DM, like 3.3. 3, 3. Then on this one, there's no embedding available at this moment. And you only can see the K2. Um, so for this one, for the, the Quest 2, uh, this is our new microscope. And 
we, we hope after the, all this upgrade, the microscope will, will become better. Because this one have the face plate, the, the class two have face plate. So you come to a sort of more, uh, some software like auto CTF and some, some kind of special alignment for the face. So this is for the, for you can more have more more software for to align the microscope into more per perfect. So in fact, uh, this is also help the other, the, the collection. You combine the face play with your single particle collection with your tomography, so you can improve your contrast. Also, the alignment is more accurate. We hope we can get this one, the auto CTF to the to class two, or uh, the class one as well. Or even we can go to F twenty if they're allowed. So. Uh, this is what it's doing, it's going on. Uh, so for the, because this is what the market we have. So I think when people have a lot of choice, so then we can, when we have a new facility, then you have a new choice to what to use. Uh, Crystal is already talking, talking about how you choose to choose the microscope for different use, the screen, the, the first data set, and the data collection, and different type of the data collection software, and what the, um, what the purpose you want. So I don't need to repeat this one. So yeah, this is just from the, la, la, uh, the last course, uh, EM course, so it's all one, but I told you what is the different is the software and the detector mech, and then the, the choice of the data collection will be different from the entry level one. So the next, yeah, next part I am talking about of the, the booking system. You know, since the last, well, we prepared the, from last year to investigate how to get a better uh, booking system and also we can use uh, the logbook for our electronic logbook for all the facility. So the Calpenton come come up the top of the list we have. So in from early this year we start to try it. So uh, start to try it and the totally switch to the Calpenton from the first of April because we give people at least three or months to practice to how to use. So but so far, I think everyone's quite happily used <laughs> now. <laughs> I think although there's a lot of bug, but we debug, but it seems to be come, come up, come up quite good. Um, so uh, we have a, uh, this is to tell, tell people that all the EM users and their group leader, doesn't matter you use EM or not, can have a count for the for Carpendo. Um, but if you want to book the microscope, you need to be trained for that microscope, <laughs> and then we will set up the user group for each microscope. So, but if you don't, you are not use microscope, but you are the group leader. You want to know what your people are doing and what we have and how the microscope use. You can apply for account for a group leader account. You can still look all the things. You can still check the statistic and see what people are booking. But you cannot book yourself <laughs> if you are not trained. Uh, but we welcome all the group leaders come to be become the expert of E and they all can book. <coughs> so um, this is just a quickly go go through because um, it will be good to we go go to the web website yeah, at the end of this, this one and we go to the website I show you some feature of this. <laughs> yeah, so. So this is the one get started. When you go to website, you, you want to register a new user, you click this one, you type in your, select your username, your password, pa password, and then you, you can the rest, you can you use this button. If you log in, use this, this button. And then for new user, you can you just type in all what you re request. There's some of them you may need, don't need to type in because they are, this is from the original one. Um, so you, then after fill the new user registration, you click the register. So we should receive, so that you will get this one, you will get this information and waiting for confirm. So this we usually, it automatically send email to three of us. So if we saw it, we are happening in a, in a computer can access, we can just set up for you. So yeah, this is what it look like. I think you already know, you, you select what you have on the bookmark, what, what you want to see of the microscope from bookmark, and then you can, you can, or you can select hide or, or click or anyone and let's display here because if you don't want to display too many, then you cannot see. So you can edit, you can, you can click your, your booking, you can edit, you can view, or you can see what the, your history, what you change in the history. So 
Yeah, this one just, I think you, the booking, we already know. Now we, we go to the, uh, the EM uh, um, booking um, policy. Well, this is quite, quite simple. You need to be trained. And then if you need to be, uh, to be different, like uh, training on GCP, we'll, we'll talk about. So, so you, will do, you can contact, you can send email to EM list. So three of us can, can see it. We don't need high individual name. So you will be put into the waiting list, and then people will tell you. Uh, if any problem, just ask us. We are just next to the EM room. Uh, so it's quite, quite easy. So the EM loop, this is the one. We, the, the, way we, the way we uh, adopt a, a Carpendo is we can, this Carpendo uh, uh, software, you can just apply all the, the rule to it. Doesn't mean this help you organize your booking. You, you don't need to remember, say, oh, I, I book how many sessions now? So uh, you, you don't want to double book or not. You will, the software will, will remind you if you double book or if you, you book too early and you haven't finished your session, then you have to book the next one. Uh, and then you also not allow you to change other people's booking. You not allow you to change a past booking. Um, you not allow to book for other people. So this is what the, the, the rule. And um, but then uh, other rule is for EM session. So I don't know you can see. <laughs> Uh, you will be you is in the website of you in the website will be so so this is what well, for we only need uh, for three hundred minus uh, kvm only one session allowed to book in advance so you have to choice three minus scope three three hundred minus scope to get which one you want to use then book one so for f twenty and split crawl um, you can book one session in advance for each minus scope. Uh, but the session will limit to six hours. So if you, but the speed is so far, we did not limit, they will not set the limit to six hours if, if you want to do crowd or longer because, but if we need, we will apply this one because if too many people, too much waiting, so we will apply. But this one is very really strict apply, so the software don't want you to book. So, <clears throat> so for speed general, you can also book one session in advance, but you, the session will limit to four hours. So, uh, because this for, if you for checking sample of next dance, four hours will be enough and allow next people book. But if no people book, of course, you can carry on use. So, um, this is, uh, yeah, you need to be training and then we need to put into user list of Carpento, then you're able to book this mind scope. So you have problems, just give us an email or a call. Um, yeah, same thing, you have to do, just do on your one, you can, if, if on the day any microscope is free, nobody use, you can book and use, but you cannot book in advance. If you saw tomorrow empty, nobody will be have to wait for after 12 o'clock, the midnight to book. This is some kind of system allow, uh, allow like that, uh, but you can still use. Um, so uh, one feature is after finish session or during session have problem, you need to update your booking. Even if you're OK, you put OK on description, then update when you finish. Otherwise, it's not allowed you book the next one. This is try to check what people come to use or not. And also the problem. If you have a problem, you need to uh, tick the technical problem, tick yes. And also give some description of what problem, like vacuum crash or lost the bin or anything uh, to hear. Because this one, it, if you click update, it will, it will send, automatically send an email to us. Three of us will receive the email, doesn't matter what time. And also, it will create an entry, an entry to the logbook. Because the carpenter for each microscope have a, have a logbook. We are, yeah, at the end, we go to website. Well, I think all the people only use, but this is something we both, like user and us, need to keep filling in. Either during your session or afterwards, we can, we, after any maintenance, um, any service or any upgrade, we hope we all can write in the logbook. This link to each microscope, and then you can see it when you go to scroll through history, you can see if the problem happened or was, or what is how people are doing. You even can upload the picture. So we already use some of the feature. You can just get a screenshot to say, oh, what problem now? What voice vacuum look like? And then send out to the chat. You get a record. So, but, but we need all use uh, together to, to make it work. So because the paper, 
notebook we are no, no longer you, uh, used now, just used for like the password <laughs> of logging a different account. Uh, so this is one we it, it have a very good uh, potential uh, to be a, a good system. So, uh, so we come to be quite kind of to uh, GSAP, yeah, some, some, some help. So still here, we now, this year we added, uh, this time we use GSAP here, we have three people now for general everything. We are the office next to the class two room now. And if any like problem on your, on your data on, or, or the, the detector, Greg is, is quite good on this and Richard also, they are the better detectors so they know all, everything of the detector. And for general advice and microscopy, we have a lot of group now, yeah. Okay, so we just try to add more more people, but <laughs> sorry, maybe. And the, now we get more tomograph people, uh, group come. So like John Brick, Wanda, uh, Radu. So they are very good, very experienced on the tomography. So any problem, you can talk to them. And their group member too, they are very experts. So we hope our training can be benefited from their group, group people. Um, there's not a, a, a whole list, just, just to put them in, we got a lot of EM group now. So this is our chair, a lot of EM experts here, plus a very good facility. So we, and we, should, we should do uh, better and better. So uh, some other resources, the website, yeah, we were, we were so little uh, after this one, we got EM, we got EM in, in internet now. So we hope to put more and more information there, but it's still under con, uh, construct, uh, construction. So uh, we will add more, but there, then the old LMB wiki is still alive. Some, some information is really old, but it's still there, but it's internet, internet only. And some other EM groups, Web, website, the group website also very informative. So, so if you want to find information, you can go to all, all the people's, uh, the, so, but again, I don't know, is it in, internal or some of the internal, some is external. Yeah, so, yeah, oh, this is the, just this is the old wiki page. Well, there's the, you got every people's wiki page, but you can go, you can see this 3D, and this is what the source edit uh, a lot to give. So to give uh, you what, what you have is, it's a good thing is that you can link from here to see the rely on website, and then you can see the rely on tutorial, uh, these kinds of things. So it's quite a, a good one. Yeah, but it's just, yeah, you need to upgrade, but well, gradually well, will face into the new uh, new um, LMB in, in uh, internet now. So, but it's still useful. Okay, this is the EM internet. Um, so if you go to internal website and then you go to scientific, it's a, a scientific facility. So you can go to the EM, EM web. web. When you go into Carpenter calendar, you can see the all other tab. So don't forget that you can see some information from the facility. So uh, GSAP has put all the, all the, some good parameter into, for each mask into, into there. You can see some configuration and, and the pixel size and it's everything. So I think this is the most useful one. So I, I also welcome to people, you have a new calibration from your crystal, you can also uh, let, let us know that you can keep the, you keep update. So yeah, this is this is, will be become more and more. So two sides, the EM internet and the carpendo side will be linked each other to give you all the information. And the good thing is that we also have a lot of menu in here. You can do everything. Um, like uh, you, you you can look at how to how to use uh, this download. <laughs> uh, how how to you use all the EM become the. When you click, it's just a download. But so from, the, from the website of the internal, you click, you can see the information on the web, website. So they're linked. So now the training, I will hand from here, I will hand over to, to, to G Sharp here. Hi, everyone. So now my part is to explain the training opportunities here at the LMB. I must say that there are mainly two ways to learn EM here. One is through osmosis. So just you speak with people and you will learn lots of things. The other way is through uh, EM training. 
So before we go through the, what is EM training, I should remind you that uh, before you even ask uh, for it, uh, decide to go through the EM training, you should always ask this question first. So is uh, cryo EM suitable for me and my complex? The reason why you should ask this question first is because EM training is time consuming. So, and you really want to use your time properly. So as you see from the top, uh, from the top part of the slide, the time frame is basically more than three months. So, and this assuming that you practice, because the secret here to, uh, to learn EM is actually practice. So after you finish the training, the information are too many, and in order to keep all this information, you need to practice. Anyway, so first requisite, yeah, is uh, time, uh, is time consuming and requires a time commitment of several months and possibly longer. And second question is, okay for my complex? So here it comes the biochemistry. Biochemistry, good biochemistry is really, really important. Rule of thumb is rubbish in, rubbish out. Microscope don't do uh, miracles. Perhaps image processing can do miracles, like you can see Einstein from noise, but microscope don't do. So it's you making miracles on the bench. Uh, third thing, shouldn't be treated as a side project. So if you're trying to learn EM for fun, <laughs> avoid it. Uh, so just some statistics. Uh, now the, the, the EM facility counts 135 active uh, trained users. So those are the users that, uh, basically all the users that we have in Calpendo. Uh, 161 users received training since 2013. This is the users that received just basic training. On the top of this, there are users who received training for uh, other type of microscope, sample preparation, other type of trainings. So the amount of uh, time that we spend training is massive. So training available. There are currently four trainings available. Very soon there will be uh, some more. So currently available, there is a sample preparation where we show you how to use the ancillary equipment in order to prepare your sample. Then there is uh, a basic uh, uh, room temperature and the cryo EM training. This is the most uh, expensive in terms of time because it requires a few sessions in order you to learn how to do EM. And then there is a cryo EM training for using the 200 kV scopes. In this case, it's the F20. And then uh, EM training for uh, high resolution data acquisition. Uh, very soon there will be also uh, the opportunity to learn fib milling. So far, Patrick Hoffman from Wanda's lab has been giving training to few people, but he promised me that he will show me his secret. And then soon there will be also available high resolution tomography through Dustin Morando from John Brink's lab. So let's go through quickly the training available. So sample preparation. Sample preparation is pretty straightforward, doesn't require time. However, it really depends on what you want to do. If you want to do some, uh, room temperature or um, uh, cryo EM. So the training doesn't require much time. It will be probably half uh, half day or a day. However, the true sample preparation, I mean, to get a good sample in order to look it at the microscope requires a huge amount of time. And this is, again, up to you. We will show you how to use, uh, for example, a carbon coater in order to make a layer of carbon if you want to use as a support for your particles, so we can show you how to make a, a grid hydrophilic, uh, or how to prepare as a, a negative stain samples. This really doesn't take much. However, all the optimization on the back requires, requires a lot of time. So, and this is again up to, up to you. Uh, uh, also, we, we provide training on uh, how to use a uh, vitrobot, uh, so plunge freezing basically, in order to prepare a sample for cryo -EM. Uh, you can either, uh, you have the option either to use a semi-automated uh, system, which is the VitroBot, or uh, the manual plunger, which is all manual. And uh, during this session, we'll be basically explaining you how the machine works, what is the software doing, and uh, how to prepare, uh, uh, how to liquefy ethan, and how to check the temperature, how to optimize the machine in order for you to, to use the machine. The other training that is provided is basic, uh, uh, basic room temperature and cryo EM training. This involves using uh, the under 20 kV uh, transmission electron microscope. Those are uh, small microscopes that we use mainly for, uh, for, uh, for screening. They're very good uh, example to get started with EM. They're very easy to use, very friendly in a way. Uh, this training is the most uh, expensive in terms of time, and this is the one that really requires commitment from you. So 
There are on average eight, 10 sessions, and uh, my last between 32 and 40 hours, not each session. Each session is between three and four hours. It really depends on, uh, on uh, the group of the, uh, the number of people that are in, uh, in the group. We usually go with two people, but if the queue is too long, we also start doing three people at a time. And uh, the duration of the session really depends on the users. So how many times we crash the vacuum, how many times we, we make mistakes, and these kind of things. Uh, there are two main parts. There is room temperature, where we give information about the microscope, sample uh, loading, how to take images, and then aligning, uh, alignment. And the second part is uh, cryo-EM. Here we show you how to prepare your holder, how to load your holder in the microscope, and then uh, how to do the cryo-transfer, how to set up the load of software for uh, load of software for manual data collection, mainly for screening your sample. And then there are a few sessions at the end where basically the user brings its own sample and we screen the sample all together. So this gives us the chance to, to learn a little bit more with the real, uh, real examples. So just to go quickly through what we do this, uh, during this basic uh, uh, room temperature and cryo -M training. So the first part will be mostly talking about the microscope, how it works, what are the lenses, where are the lenses, how we control the lenses, uh, where are the aperture, and uh, what is the detector, how it's working, and the vacuum system, all the different pumps, and how they work, what they try to achieve, and uh, what you should look at when you're using the microscope. So basically, it's a mini lecture, uh, the, a mini version of the Chris Russo uh, uh, lecture. So then there, is, uh, the, there will be also, you will learn how to load the side entry holder and how to do the alignments on the scope in order to get a good micrograph and then how to get a good micrograph. There will be some, uh, some introduction about CTF, uh, Fourier transform. And uh, so yeah, high, uh, basically uh, all you need to know in order to judge an image. Then the second part, it will be about cryo -EM, and uh, here we show you how to prepare your uh, cryo holder here. How to prepare basically means how to pump the cryo holder in order to get the best performance, and then how to do this cryo transfer, how to load it in, uh, in the microscope, and uh, how to set up the low dose in order to uh, load those. Yeah, basically how to set up the optics in order to uh, look at the radiation sensitive spacements. Uh, after this training, the, the secret to learn is to practice. So keep practicing, even though you don't have a good sample, keep practicing, keep using the microscope. Otherwise, after two weeks after the training, you will forget everything. So after you finish this training, and hopefully your sample is good enough to, to, look, to, you know, uh, to do data collection, high resolution data collection, then you can, uh, you can access to 300 KVs. Uh, microscope. As I just said, we have three, possibly five in the near future. And uh, so these microscopes, uh, also this type of trainings requires multiple sessions in order to be fully independent. The training is usually combined with the data collection, which means you need to have good sample to look at. And uh, uh, sessions might be uh, far apart due to the microscope booking. So the idea there is basically we book the microscope for you when it's available. We Come, come up with a date and then we do data collection on your sample and we are there helping you. So what we do during the day is we show you, show users how to clip, cartridge, uh, clip the grids in the cartridges, how to load these cartridges in the, in the different uh, uh, multi-spacement cassette and then how to load this into the microscope. Each micro, the, the software and the way the microscope works, they are all the same, okay? So what changes uh, basically the way you loaded the sample. And here is showing a, a clipping uh, station of, from the cryos and then uh, a loading station from uh, the, the Polara. So also during the day, we show you how to align a FEG microscope through the direct alignment, possibly set up, uh, if you want to do a face plate, we can show you how to align the face plate, how to set up the face plate. And then we talk about similarities and differences between the different um, uh, the microscopes that uh, you have been using uh, before. So here is uh, one, and one example, well, two examples of the 300 kV. Here is the Mighty Polara and the Friendly Cryos. And then at the end of the day, hopefully, you, we, we will have uh, beautiful uh, samples that we can uh, actually set up for uh, fully automated data collection. The options are different. Here is shown just the uh, EPU. 
uh, and we also have Serial EM, Tomo, there are a few different software. So you just need to, to, to ask and everything will be, uh, will be available. How do we access? So first, who can access to the, to the, to the training? People here at the LMB. So we, uh, unfortunately, we don't provide uh, any training for uh, visitors and students that spend uh, less than a year at the LMB. Uh, how do I, we access to the training? It's pretty easy. You just send an email through the, uh, to the EM facility at mrclmb.com.uk. Uh, 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 tell us why you need the uh, uh, training. So basically, you explain what is your project about, uh, which state is your project, have you uh, you are purifying. You have purified your protein, or you are still cloning the protein. So and then we we can come up with uh, with uh, with a date, and uh, we'll put you in the list, and then we'll uh, contact you with uh, with all the dates. Uh, yeah, that's it. So acknowledgement. I want to acknowledge Christos, Shaosha, Venus, and Greg. Those are very great people, and uh, uh, an endless uh, uh, resource of information. So anything you need. You just can ask these people, and they will always they always have an answer. And thank you for listening. So I've done. <laughs>